Hello, this video shows the making of a bass string that's steel in a core with copper winding. So this is Humphrey Lee's pianos and uh, it's Billy who's making up the eye on this. Um, this is a night piano and actually the string broke at the bottom which is very unusual. You can see where it's broken and uh, that's so unusual I don't think that's ever happened. The night strings are very reliable so that's a great surprise. So I'm setting up the eye just to see how long it is. That was the bit that broke. As I say it's very unusual this. We normally would strings break at the tuning pin. So to have one break down the bottom it's actually after the tuner had tuned it he was sitting down doing some work on the computer and suddenly heard this bang. So, uh, so it's a bit of a unique experience this. So now we're measuring the wire itself uh, just to see how what thickness is at a micrometer. This if you were in the trade you'll know exactly what this is about. 0 0.95 is that right? Yeah. Now this is Billy by the way who works for Humphrey Lees and uh, has been doing work for us for many years now. So here's all the piano wire gauges. You can see got the numbers on there. Um, different companies have different ways of storing these but it's useful having them in a reel like that and then you can just reel them out. Sorry about the pun. Um, there we are. So this is the right size. That's point, what did we say it was? 0.95. That's 16. Size 16. This is the wire. This little machine here straightens the wire. This is adjustable again. You can adjust it to different thickness wires. It's a bit pulling. Right, so now the wire's straight. When you mean straight, oh I see, takes the coil out of yes. it, makes the wire straight. That's remarkable. Um, I haven't seen one like that before. I've looked it's on the internet. I, I looked on the internet before works. I came to see what different what, what different people had, but uh, I didn't see that one. That's 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 new to me. That's really good. It works really well. Now we're going to make the eye. So there we go. I'll try and get a bit closer so you can see without interfering with what Billy's doing. Uh, which is a bit sorry. It's difficult to get this picture in. There we are. Let's try around there. Is that okay, Billy? You can, I'm not in your way. So it doesn't, doesn't bubble too much. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Well, you, can, you, can, you can come close now if you like. Right, let's see if I can come above it. There we are. So what we do is you go around the pin and then we've got this Whoops. handle that goes. Yeah, top. that's similar to other things I've seen, but everyone has. Ah, there we go, yes. Yeah. So that's making an English eye. Now we talked about eyes before, and English eyes are the preferable eye for the piano trade, I think, if you were in the piano show you might like to comment. I'll show you a German eye because there's a piano with a German eye here as well. And here's a German eye. Um, apparently this is the old set of strings. It was, was recently restrung but it needed a new rest plank. We talked about that before that very often pianos are restored and the rest plank's no good so you need to replace the rest plank. Keep the old, in this case, keep the strings. And this has a German eye, not something that Billy would make but um, it was on the piano originally. I'm sorry, Billy's telling me he would make them if he was asked to, but given the preference, uh, we'd ask if the client want, wouldn't mind a German eye, uh, sorry, an English eye instead. Now at one end here we have a weight to put the pressure on the string, and we're going to connect the wire on. Uh, this is the machine, and uh, apparently it was remade recently because this was a bit too flexible. Is that right, Billy? And yeah. so that's been remade uh, since, a solid bar. yeah, just recently, last year. So just trying to improve all the time. Um, and Billy's going to thread it on there. So I don't know if we can get in close enough with that one. There we are. So that's going to be threaded on uh, to a hook, which we'll try and get to see if we can get up to the hook. Sorry, there we are. So there we are, hooked on there and then stretched along the whole length. So there we are. Thread through the hole there. There we are. And uh, there we are, stretched. And uh, do you tune it? <laughs> See the weight pulling it, pulling it tight. So I suppose the heavier the weight, the higher the pitch.
Now, as it was broken at the bottom end, it's a bit harder to measure uh, the copper length and just be absolutely certain we've got, got it starting in the right place. In retrospect, we perhaps should have measured from the what we thought it would be, just to give you an extra security on that. But it looks as though we're going to get it right, I think. Yeah. Hopefully. I'll do a follow-up video on this to the, piano, the string fitted to the piano just to and we can see how accurate it was <laughs> hopefully we'll be absolutely spot on and yeah the and the copper length and measure on here Would you go slightly under just in case, or would you? No, it's, no I'll, I'll do it exactly the same. Exactly the same. Because this doesn't have enough tension to yeah to, to make the difference. Yeah. That's when you when you tune it. Yeah. So I'll make it do exact. But if you would have sent me the measurements only, then I would have take about ten millimeters off. Yeah, yeah, just to be That's sure, you take ten millimeters off. So without the string. You want to be on the safe side, basically, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> don't want it to but go over. You, when you have the string, then yeah, yeah. This is soft, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's quite safe to do it exactly as it is. Yeah, it great. What's the grip? Uh, just Billy's just saying we need to flatten. Uh, can you say it again, Billy? We need to flatten the end of the end of the wire here with the copper ends. Yeah. For the copper to 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 grip properly on the end of the string. one end and we have to do we have to do the same on the, on the other end. So that's for copper to grip on the beginning. Now the next step is to measure the, the diameter of the of the string with the steel and the copper together. 1.95 1.95 number, number 60 gauge number 16 I'm going to 1.9 1.95 we need copper size number nine which is that right so it's copper size number nine we um, got all the different sizes so you got all the different sizes here so getting thicker towards the base we're just doing a quick check quick test to make sure it is the right one So just winding a bit on, sorry, you can't see uh, there, that's better from above. Um, so just checking that it is the right one, measuring it. Yeah, that's, and that's is that spot correct? On. That's spot on. Absolutely. Spot on, so that's great. Um, you, Billy said we've checked the sizes. And they, everything seems to be perfect, exactly the right size. Now we're going to make the string. And the, the base string machine, how it operates, it's, it's with my foot pressing. And once you press that, it kind of the motor starts and it turns. It turns the machine, so we can uh, wind the copper onto the string. Excellent. is made a little bit longer what I need to do now is I need to cut it the exact length I just made it a bit longer sorry my microphone's on me so um, Billy said that he's making it a bit longer having to cut it down slightly that's um, to the right size. yeah uh, I've noticed that on other videos about string making too Excellent. Yeah, this is wonderful demonstration. Thanks for doing this, Billy. So, so there we are. 
So this was a particularly difficult one to do because the the, the eye was broken, which is extremely unusual. Um, say unusual, probably only one in a hundred times. Yeah. And it's very unusual for night strings to break, really, isn't it, Billy? They, they're such reliable pianos. Um, so don't know what happened there because I checked the piano; it didn't seem to be rusty at all at the bottom end. So it's just unusual really and we're absolutely spot on there i'm amazed that you managed to get that right billy i can't <laughs> believe it uh, but then you do all we have, we have done this a few times <laughs> <laughs> you know so much thank you so much billy no problem at all you're very welcome so now we're going to fit the, the string to this piano this is a knight k6 or k20 piano was made in 1973 and my colleague Matthias has just pitch raised and tuned it and the string didn't break in his pitch raising and tuning. I mentioned before we usually lubricate here and here uh, because that's the normal breaking point and they, they they actually snap here the difference in tension between here and there there's often a rust bond here sorry I meant there's a rust bond here very often and uh, if it's not been tuned for a long time this was A426 when we got it in so it's a big pitch raise to A440 about A442 he's left it at and it, well, it didn't break when he was tuning it uh, it wasn't broken here and then when he was sitting at the desk he heard the noise of it breaking down the bottom it's so unusual that and if you're a technician you can like, might like to confirm that normally especially night pianos never strings never break if they do it, it would be at the top end that we and then we try to splice it first sorry I'm looking at the hammers just to show you that there's not much wear but it's a, a little bit mellow but Matthias liked the mellow tone um, so instead of refacing it we can offer this as a mellower night it has a beautiful sound the K6 K20 is a beautiful piano Normally, if there's any signs of looseness at all, we'd replace the pin. Um, if you're taking the, the pin out and putting it back in, you almost definitely need it replacing because obviously it's going to make the uh, it slightly looser. So in this case, we just need to pull it out. I think I'll pull it out a bit more than that, just to the safe side. We can always knock it in a bit um, if we need to. So it's best to go a bit more than we think. And uh, so let's go quite a long way out, really, and then we can always knock it back in a little bit um, so it's a long long way proud of the rest of them okay. so the string broke just here which is unheard of well not completely unheard of but in nights I don't think we've ever had one night strings are very reliable so we'd obviously guarantee pianos for as long as uh, if you ever break a string um, five years is normal but sometimes after that too we'll still do it because it's so unusual um, if you're in the trade like to comment that would be great so to give people confidence that knights are such special pianos really so the, the new string if we fit it on there it's going to fit around here and um, we'll have to give it a twist later on I'll explain that so it's going to fit like that this this uh, that will have to be bent round I think so it's looking like the others and then it's just f fitted on there then we go up to the top of the piano and uh, we can see that it's going to fit nicely of course it's it's currently slightly shorter because it pulls it's going to come up to that level that needs to be like that and then we're going to go through the pin now the string's too long obviously so I've got to cut it off usually about three fingers uh, three or four fingers uh, it marks it nicely and then we cut it about here and then thread it through the pin uh, right so now we cut the string hopefully to the right length and uh, we, get, we just press it through the uh, we don't want the becket to stick out. This is called a becket, the bit that bends round. I don't know why. Um, we don't want it to stick out, so we just put it right up to the top there and, and then turn the string round, make sure it doesn't pull through. And there we are. The becket's slightly sticking out, um, which uh, doesn't really matter. It's just for tidiness. We want it to be as close as possible. So that if I pull that tight while I'm turning it, it will hopefully stay in the same position there we are and we'll keep turning it round we want it, the coil to be nice and tight so I'm keeping the coil now as we come round to the far side I want the coil to be on the same going inwards like the other ones are I think that's correct now we can start to go a little bit faster hopefully I'll just double check it it's nice to try and keep it as neat as possible obviously not essential but just nice to do that so it's winding it on now 
a little bit further let's see how far we are from yeah it's probably about right so now I can put the hitch pin on uh, down the bottom end so let's go down the bottom So now we can hitch it on here. Actually, I'm going to wind it a bit more on the top. For let's put it on. Now we're going to have to do to do some twisting in the string afterwards. To two turns to the anti-clockwise is what the string maker is asking me to do. So that's hooked on there. Now let's go back up to the top again and uh, do the last bit of the process, which is tightening up on there. We've got three coils which is roughly what I wanted I never get 100% I don't know if you're a restringer if you do that much better than I do if you look at the pin here I've got three coils on it roughly I think it's tidy let's have a look here so we might tidy it up a bit more after sounding roughly the same. Now I'm going to wind it down a bit because I want to do some twists at the bottom. Now let's take it back down a bit. I'll pull it off and then we want a couple of turns to the left. Let's see if we can manage that without any pliers. Now I think we're going to have to use some pliers on that. I'm sorry I couldn't video the bit about turning it two turns anti-clockwise. Um, by the way, it goes in the winding direction of the winding. Some string makers might make a clockwise winding, in which case you want to go clockwise. In this case, it's anti-clockwise winding, so the same direction as the winding. The, the, the double winding will go back the other way. The machine that we saw earlier making the string, that can be flipped so that it goes the other way for the double winding. So now let's, uh, let's tighten the string up. So now the string's been put on, let's listen to the tone of it. We're going to have to stretch it because the problem with the new string is it does stretch and go flat quite quickly. Um, that's why we prefer to splice them. We talked about splicing before, I think. Um, and if uh, splicing is where you keep the original string and tie a knot in it, it's actually very reliable if it works. Um, it's about 50-50 whether it works or not, from my experience. But splicing means you keep the original string, so the tone's more exact matching. So it's a question down to the string maker to make the best possible match. We'll listen to that in a second, but first of all, I'm going to stretch the string a bit. Now to stretch the string and give it a pull, um, I'm using handkerchiefs so I don't get the string get sweat on the string. Um, really, when you're putting new strings on, you always wear gloves so you don't tarnish them. But I'm just going to pull it as hard as I can, and that stretches it a bit. We'll probably find it's gone flat now. So it's gone flat with stretching. So that helps to bed it in a bit. Um, we we'll, can also check that it's really sitting properly on the hitch pin and, and on the bridge pins too. So that's okay, it normally is, but it's worth Now the goal is obviously to get the tone sounding the same as the ones next to it, so... And when it's a new string, it's very hard to get it matching. Sometimes they can be quite annoying because if the string isn't made properly, it will sound so different and makes a, a, a totally different sound for the bichord makes a, um, the new one will make a different sound from the old one, but these are pretty close. Let's just wedge them off to see if we can tell the difference between them. There's, there's the new one and the old one. Very similar. New strings are slightly better, you could say, from old ones, but really you don't notice much difference between the two. Now last of all, what we'd normally do is sharpen it slightly and then wedge it off down the bottom so that um, this string isn't actually sounding for a while uh, because when it's new it's going to stretch, it's going to go flat and that's a nuisance if you just bought the piano. So we just tune it slightly higher. There we are. And that will drop down. So now we wedge it at the bottom. So I'm going to wedge it here and uh, put the wedge between that and the next string and let's listen to that so listen to the two notes that's the G and that's the other the other string that's wedged so there's one string sounding on both of those 
it's not terribly different as you can hear it's better than having it going well out of tune or badly out of tune I should say so that's fitting a, a new bass string onto this night 1973 106 centimeters tall and we fitted the new string here and we dampen them off for the moment those two just as the new string settles down so if you buy this piano and I really can encourage you to do so it's beautiful if you want to especially if you want a mellow sounding piano so I was going to say if you buy this piano that wedge can be taken out after the first tuning about three months and the strings will just last forever and ever on the nights we never had problems with them normally it's very very rare that so but uh, I hope that's been helpful both for the, the process of string making I'm, I'm sure I'm not the best at that but I'm trying to show you the general process and if you're in the trade and can say something better please do beautifully mellow could be refaced and made brighter as my colleague Matthias who was tuning it and working on it says that it's beautiful as it is beautiful touch and we always perfect the touch on the pianos anyway if you're interested in trying the piano out we're doing a very special offer at the moment on trying out two percent of the purchase price per month and you can see if you like this piano or what you pay for the on this piano can be taken off a different piano it's very warm very strong for a small piano thank you very much for listening